Join us this episode as we tick off a couple of tourist attractions, boat jobs, fully loaded, ready for another five weeks, off the grid, and finally continue our journey north. Power and Zelgina have been next to the last seven and a half hours. It's coming down to the wire, coming around the corner. Okay, pop staff, who will be the front one to round the sun? We're going to head around to Seed Harbour or Maze Bay, which I think has got a nice beach. Upload a video for you guys because I'm running late already. And uh, yeah, just chill out there. We haven't had internet for about three weeks now, so we're pretty keen to get some stuff done and uh, catch up with the videos and all that sort of stuff. So anyway, it's really nice at Whitehaven, but sadly we do need to go and get ready to prepare for our next leg. We stopped into Sid Harbour for a few days to tick off a couple of must seats one being the Sunday's Peak Walk. Due to three shark attacks in recent years, one of which was fatal, swimming off the back of your boat is not recommended here. The hike to the peak is a steep two kilometre uphill walk and took us around 40 minutes. It was a bit hot and sticky, but at the top you're rewarded with breathtaking views over most of the Sundays. We are heading off to Airlie Beach for our, hopefully, what will be our final provision um, before heading north again. But yeah, we're just over it. Sid Harbour's been nice, but just too many bullets. So we're gonna get out of here. Pretty excited. We haven't been to the shops or land for four weeks. So I'm looking forward to some different food. Excited, Michael? Yeah. What are you doing that for? Oh, I just don't the reefing lines to get caught in it. And also the stress factor. If you leave it on when it's windy, the stress level goes up. Because it's, it's just <laughs> it's noisy ass. Beautiful sail, 20 knots on the beam. Seven knots, seven, eight knots. Good sail, Michael? Yeah, not bad. Comfy. You were worried too. Oh, when it's gusting 30 knots, you never look forward to it, but it, yeah. We're going the right way. Going with everything, tides in the right direction. No and problem. Pretty much flat water sailing because we're between the islands. This is as rough as it's got. Very nice. So we got into early yesterday afternoon and we've refilled the water, dumped all our rubbish off the boat, and now we just need to get another mega list washing food, fuel, gas, bunnings. Uh, upload some videos and we also have to get our sail repaired so just about to take that off now before the wind comes up uh, we got to repair got to repair the clue of the sail it's uh, started to unstitch itself it's not much holding it on there at the moment so luckily we got no wind this morning very convenient it's had like 25 knots for the last four days so just gonna drop that off now and run it to the sail maker. We were so lucky our mates from Della Magic had their car here, which made provisioning so much easier. Five hundred dollars worth of shopping. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Fully loaded. Fully loaded. Ready for another five weeks. All right, so the boat has gobbled up all that food. Next run is fuel. Boat food. Boat food. <laughs> the expensive one. I'm so glad we have Lincoln's car. So we've got our sail back from Ullman Sails. 40 bucks they charge us just, just to reinforce the clue, which is great. Uh, flown about 20 knots at the moment. We'll see how we go putting it up. I don't know if it's going to work or not. But we want Time to get will out tell.
get this cell repaired in the first place. So I'm flogging on it, it stays like that. Was that fun? Yeah, shit. <laughs> we are out of here, out of early. Finally, last time here on the way up. So pretty freaking excited. After a short 20 mile run up to Gloucester Point, it was great to finally be on our way north again. We had one stop we wanted to make, a bucket list item that we'd set ourselves to reach a few years ago. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, it's come full circle, Michael. Pretty, uh, Here we are. It's so different now. Doesn't it? Yeah. How surreal is this? Pretty crazy. Right eh? where are we? So we are at Monty's. We actually stopped here about a year and a half ago when we were boat shopping. And we said we're gonna come back here when we have the boat anchored there and uh, have a cocktail. But unfortunately, due to COVID, the restaurant's shut and the wind has made us park around the corner. But here we are anyway. We finally made it in our own boat. So it's pretty cool to see it come full circle got the little tender there so that'll have to do. <laughs> mm. After getting rained out that afternoon we will back up early the following day to continue north. We are nearly matching. We're we going faster than them. Looks like we've made ground. We're going faster than the fancy sea wind. What do we got, Michael? This doesn't happen very often. Well, we did it the other day too. Yeah, we didn't even realize. They, they were keeping an eye out. They said we caught up to them by two miles. Selkie 5.7, we're doing 5.5. Oh, okay, so they adjusted their size. 5.6. They're pretty much doing the same. So almost the same. They've got their fancy screecher up on the bow sprit and we, what's going on with our sails, Michael? The spicy aubergine up. What's that mean? It's a, uh, I don't know wing what on it is. Wing. It's like wing on wing, but not quite wing on wing. Because we're sort of got the wind, what's it, broad reach? Yeah, we're broad reaching and we've got the pulled out head sail to windward and then the uh, main just uh, pretty much centered. So that's the setup. Pull it out, heady. Centered main, sort of. Chapel pulled right over. I don't know if there's any, <laughs> any real sailors out there. We win in Michael? For now. <laughs> they do look like they're going, they're gaining on us though. Yeah, they put their screecher and their jib out. With a semi wing on wing. We're going about half a knot faster than us, according to AIS. Wind's picked up a bit. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Doing seven to ten knots. Occasional 11? Yeah, occasional 11. Right. Just pulled it all over to one side now. And we're uh, half a head sail. And the main's spilling a little bit. But it's fine. We really don't want to reef the main because we're so close to being there. But, it's so uh, rough. It's... This Whoa! <laughs> this, uh, oh, this, this swell is massive like and short. Look at it. It's just so short. See, it's bloody scary. It hasn't broken over the back yet, but it looks so close. I'm never going to do it justice. One and a half knots current pushing against that swell, which is going to make it stand up like that. Doing about seven. We'll slow down. Oh, we're still doing nine, Nelly. 
Yeah, we like to sort of hit, sit between six to eight, but at the moment we're just surfing like crazy. It might be time to put a reef in, but we've just got to get around this headland just to here. We're here at the moment, so yeah. Still neck and neck with Selkie over there. They've just pulled their screecher down. But yeah, getting very, very rowdy. We've put the life jackets on. Michael's still only standing on one leg there. Seagull stamp. We have been neck and neck with Selkie the whole way. They've just gotten ahead of us now, which sucks. They're going out. They can't go wing on wing. They don't have a pole. They don't have a spinnaker. They've got a screecher though, so you can see they're just bearing away a little bit. They're probably going to go up here and tack in, and they're probably going to get better wind than us. We've decided to go for a straight course because we can't beat them because they've got a screecher. So the wind's just backed off a bit. We've got about 16 knots now. And we're doing about seven. So we're hoping that by doing less miles, a little bit slower than them, they'll be doing more miles and we might beat them. It's a close call, very close call this one. What do you reckon, Michael? Could go either way, huh? Could go either way. They could get more wind out there than us. It's been fun though. The it's wind's on shore though. It's so. held them the whole way. Yeah. It's very rare. It's very, very rare. Miles ahead. I think we're better, I think we're becoming better sailors. And I think, I think we do better dead down. Yeah, definitely. And with our new spicy aubergine. Uh, spicy aubergine, spicy no one's going to understand that one. No one understands it, but it's our half wing on wing thing. Wow, that is huge, I have no idea. We've put the pole out to the port side. 6.5. Ooh. We've got the two boats for power and Selkie. They've been next to let the last seven and a half hours. It's coming down to the wire, coming around the corner. Okay, but start. Who will be the front one around the start? We've got Selkie at 0.75. Don't look miles further out to sea yet. Going at a steady speed of six knots. Papa heading at a steady speed of uh, 6.5. Who's got a crowd that pays the rim run there, 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 there? An interesting end to the day. So, uh, I'm too lazy to hold the camera. <laughs> Michael's too tired to hold the camera, and I'm hiding from the sun. But yeah, that was a pretty hectic end to the sail today. We were. We were neck and neck with Selkie. They were out wide on probably what broad reach, yeah. going a little bit slower than us, and we were going on a direct course, doing about eight knots, and we were neck and neck. And then we got a message from our friends Della, who were just ahead of us, saying they copped a thirty knot gust coming around the headland. Twenty eight knots. Apparent wind. 28 knots apparent, so it would have been like 33 probably. And uh, we're all running downwind, so it's pretty hard downwind because you can't just bear away when it gusts like that. So we both uh, turn around quickly into the wind, drop the mainsail, furl the heady. But like everything on a boat, it can go pear shaped pretty quickly, and we actually. Someone didn't put the preventer on or lock the traveller off. Um, and yeah, when we when we turn around, like we were so lucky that no one was standing there. Luckily, Michael was over filling in the heady. And um, I just turned to cover the heady with the mainsail and it just went flying across. Boom, boom. Snapped across the deck. Luckily, it didn't break anything, but that could have just swept, that could have knocked someone overboard like knocked them out and flew them overboard like instantly. So that's why we wear our life jackets when it gets windy like that, where it, it does have the capacity to make the sails like fly across the deck like that. Cause yeah, that was seriously scary. Got the sails down and came into the anchorage and it's just like gusting big time here, for, like 30 knots. And uh, yeah, we just had a beer, 
set the anchor back down on it very, very solidly. And it's really different scenery here to the rest of the Sundays and everything. You can see it's changed a bit. It's like really arid, dry land, a bit like Baja in America or Mexico. Um, pretty cool. So I'm going to go explore it tomorrow, chill out for the rest of the afternoon. And yeah, call it a day there. See you later. Keep up start. Absolutely terrible sleep. We were going to spend a day here, but last night was so crap that we pulled anchor and we're bailing. Beautiful wing on wing sailing this morning. Only doing about five knots. Thoughts on Cape Up start, Michael? Looks nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it'll be awesome if it wasn't so windy. <laughs> Blowing its balls off all night. Yeah, and big gusts. Like, what are they called? Bullets. A lot more shacks than I anticipated. I thought it was going to be the mud crabbing paradise, but. Just looking at the amount of people and houses on the uh, western side there. Crabs get flogged, I reckon. Yeah. None of us wanted to leave today, really, and then we woke up and everyone was putting everyone their sails up. We were the last to leave. <laughs> so, anyway. On our way to Maggie, probably. You reckon? Maybe. Doubt it. We got 10 hours, it's 10 hours roughly. How many miles? 80? 70, 77. 77, so. We'll see how we go. We might stop at Rolling Green, which is we'll also to, a terrible anchorage, we'll have apparently. To, uh, up our average if we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. The wind will pick up. How's this day taking a turn for the worse? Turn for the worse? Alright, turn for the worse. Just turn for the long. 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 It's been a pretty boring, dull day. We turned the engines on a couple of hours ago because we were just going so slow and we just want to get there. So we're going to pull into a place called Cape Cleveland just before Maggie. Um, at this rate we get to Maggie just on dark. And we're just about to turn the engines off and sail the rest of the way. We are just trawling past a place called Salamander Rocks. And hopefully cook, cook a little mackerel for sashimi or something. Onto it now, just gonna troll around the drop off and then we'll turn the engines off and motor. Hopefully, we'll catch some dinner. Well, we've seen our first fish on the sounder. After an overnight stop at Cape Cleveland, we rolled into Magnetic Island the following day. Crowded. <laughs> Very crowded. This is crazy. Must be a nice spot. Never... It's always nice to dig into a place for a few days.
Join us next episode where we explore Maggie Island. So this is what happens when the coconut germinates. They were our housemates in Tonga. They were the ones that really inspired us to buy about ourselves. <laughs> and get to meet some of the local cuties. <laughs> no. I got it. Oh. eBay coconut tree climber, what could go wrong? <laughs> so much ah. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to support us further, you can sign up on Patreon for ad free early videos, bonus content, and perks. A huge thanks to our current patrons for your ongoing support.